Hi folks, it's Lindsay Setchell here again, uh, founder of HM and the HM International School of Horse and Hoof Care, where we teach owners largely all over the world, online and in person, and some of those owners go on to become barefoot professionals. And we teach them to become a specialist who can go out and go and help owners who are having problems with their horses. Now, I wanted to talk about today, as I go live on day 23, I think it is, of my personal challenge to go live on twice a day on the HM page and in the Phoenix group. And I wanted to talk about what we see as professionals when we go out into the field to help horses, owners and horses who have got problems. Now, at any typical time that I may turn up and uh, go and see a client, at any typical time, I'll, I don't know what I'm going to see. I, I, I turn up, I don't know what I'm going to see, and the owner will be standing there with their horse, they've got the horse out of the paddock or whatever, and, and I, the first thing that I will notice is usually the horse is overweight. That's number one. Then I will start getting a history from the owner who will start telling me, and this isn't just me, this is our other pros too, and they'll start telling me about the problems that they're having with hoof care and CD toe or white line disease that they think is white line disease or hoof cracks or abscesses, recurring abscesses or just generally being foot sore or thrush, uh, rink separation, laminitis, you name it there will be a long list. Now, occasionally there isn't a long list and that's lovely. But also I tend to see horses, even if they're not on that list, that the owners don't think have problems, don't think their horses have problems, their horses are overweight. And this is an issue. And why are horses overweight? Well, because they are not exercising as much as they should do for this, what should be an athlete. They're also being fed too much in terms of the forage that they're eating, the grass that they're eating. We call that forage. Um, as well as the bagged feeds and the supplements. So the feed industry has gone wild. And it's one of the fastest growing industries in the equine world. It is the fattest, fastest growing industry in the equine world. So much so that pharmaceutical companies themselves have actually created an, a different arm to their to their drug side and are starting to drug ma drug manufacturing side and are starting to manufacture supplements why because pathology is on the rise in in horses uh, and it has been for a very long time hi hi angela so pathology is on the rise in horses and it has been for a very long time. And owners are desperate to find answers to the issues that their horses are experiencing. And one of the things that obviously they, the route that they go down is they start going down the route of supplements. Now, the reason that pharmaceutical companies are now getting on the supplement, and I want to say bandwagon, is because they don't have to spend half as much money on, well, actually, hardly any money at all on research for these products compared to their to the research they have to do on drugs. Because when you produce a drug that's going that, that you're going to give to an equine, you have to have a fair bit of research to back it up. There has to be data, there has to be quantifiable data that you can get access to that tells you what this you know, how this drug is going to work and how it's going to help. But you don't have to do that in the feed industry. So for bag feeds and for supplements, you don't have to do that. And that's a bit of an issue because that means that anybody can go out and buy bag feeds and supplements whenever they want to. So we could have a horse that's suffering from chronic laminitis, a horse that's suffering from PPID, a horse that's suffering from head shaking, a horse that's suffering from PSSM, a horse that's suffering from arthritis. There could be a whole list of things, different horses with these diagnosed problems, 
and they're all taking the same supplement because they've been told that that particular supplement is going to help that horse with these various issues. Because there's no monitoring of you or me going out and buying a supplement, none at all. I don't know as the supplement manufacturer what is going on with your horse. I don't know whether your horse needs to have this supplement. So therefore, it, I have no idea whether this supplement is likely to help because I'm selling it to everybody. I'm telling everyone that if you have any kind of issues, the best thing that you can do is buy a supplement. This supplement goes out to all animals, all equines, in every single type of variable situation that they're going to find themselves in. So they're not dedicated for that particular horse. My goodness, if they were, that would cost an awful lot of money. And they are already eye-wateringly expensive. So this starts to make me question things because I'm being told that this particular supplement is going to help this particular thing. But also that this supplement will also help something else too. And also that supplement will help with something else. So this starts putting warning bells. The warning bells start going off in my head because like the pharmaceutical companies, the reason they're getting on the bandwagon is because you don't have to monitor and regulate it, the feed industry, the supplement industry. You just don't. And people, owners, females largely, will pay a lot of money. It appears to be an awful lot of money if you go and have a look at how, much, how expensive these supplements are to buy products that they have absolutely no idea quantifiably if they are helping their horse or not. But they've been told through a specific kind of marketing that this that their horses need this supplement. And so does your friend down the road whose horse is kept in all the time and's on a ton of different bag feeds. She needs that supplement too. And so is your other friend up the other end of the road who's just on a hay-only diet but the hay only diet isn't sufficient. So she's on this supplement too. Oh yeah. And then there's all the people down at the livery yard too. And they're all on the same supplement as well, because it's going to help all their problems. Do you see what I'm getting at? Anybody can buy these supplements anywhere. Now they're not treatments. A supplement is not a treatment. It is not allowed to call itself a treatment. It is not a cure and it is not a medicine. And yet you hear people talk about supplements like they are. Herbs, natural herbs, of course, are powerful. They are incredibly powerful. But supplements that are synthesized and put together in a bag and powder format, etc., are they really needed by every single horse? Um, Angela says, I fell for this, been feeding gut balancer for years, weaning him off it now. Right. Okay. Because, Angela, the gut balancer that you were feeding your horse, a few thousand other horses were on the same gut balancer in completely different situations. So this is something that we need to, to, to really look into. Because the problem that we have, the problem that I see more often than not, is obesity. That's the problem that I see. Horses that are overweight horses that are not the correct weight and i'm going to talk i've got a little slide that i want to show you in a minute and we're going to talk about what what we class as horses that are overweight that is a major problem and just the fact of being overweight can cause a myriad of issues that no supplement is going to fix and most of these horses that are overweight well all of the horses that are overweight are being fed in a manner that's keeping that weight on. And we'll talk again more about this in a minute. And I will turn up to an owner who has got some serious issues with their horse. And they have been told that this particular supplement is going to fix that issue. Like I, get, like I said, the same supplement that everybody else is using because it's gonna fix so many issues apparently. And I will say to this owner, how do you give the supplement? Oh, I put it in some chaff. 
uh, I put it in some chaff and I and I stick with it a bit of linseed and I stick with it some garlic and I stick with it all the nice smelly things that I was told that I should feed and a big dose of salt. And how do how how often do you feed that? Twice a day. And I say, your horse is overweight. And they go, oh, I know. I know. I know he's overweight. And I go, I'll just stop you there. You know your horse is overweight. Yes, I do. Why are you feeding him? Why are you feeding excess to your horse? Well, because I'm I'm a little bit worried that I'm not going to cover all bases. Yeah, but you do know, don't you, by the very fact that your horse is overweight, that you have you have now set your horse up to predispose it to a ton of problems. And we don't even know. We're scratching the surface on all of that. So recently, there's been an awful lot of people coming out on Facebook who are saying, uh, that a hay only diet, for instance, is is no good for a horse. And I've spoken about this before and that, you know, scare tactics such as your horse is going to drop down dead after three years. If you don't feed this particular supplement, this supplement, which has been fed to every single horse who ha all has different requirements. And the only person or the only the only living entity that knows what that requirement is, is, of course, the horse themselves, because. Each horse has microbes in their gut. And when you're feeding a horse, you're feeding the microbes in the gut. So there are some supplements that you'll go and you look at the ingredients and you'll see that they list things like B12. Yeah, it's got all the B12 vitamins. So it's been well documented now that microbes create B12. They make B12. And, they, and the horse can get B12, the B12 complex, such as biotin, for instance, or water-soluble water vitamins. They can get it in enough micro quantities from their bacteria in their gut. Bacteria produce all kinds of things. And we have not even begun to scratch the surface on what they can produce. Now, this is interesting because there are animals out there that are on hay-only diets. Now, this hay isn't a monoculture. It isn't one particular species of hay. This is hay that is a mix, a mixture of hays, a mixture of grasses, sorry. And that mixture of grasses has enabled the microbes in their gut to also be diverse. The hay is acting as a prebiotic to help the, the microbes in the gut. Now, when you're told to feed a supplement, you're never really told about the microbes in the gut. You're just told that the horse must be lacking various things because it's got various issues going on. But like I said, it's not a treatment. And how do you know that those issues that that horse is, is experiencing aren't down to the fact that you are overfeeding them? So I go to owners and I will see overweight horses. And my first First thing that I that I need them to do is to strip their diet out to just feed their horse hay, hay, mixed meadow hay. Take it off the grass so it's not spiking its insulin levels with these high sugars all the time. Feed it mixed meadow, mixed meadow hay for about six months and a salt mineral block and water. And that's it for six months. And cold turkey is a real big thing with horse owners, particularly ladies, who really don't want to do that because they are fearful, because they've been made afraid that that's going to make their horse drop dead. Similarly to the people who put out that horses cannot survive on a hay-only diet. So I say to them, what we're going to do is we're going to strip out everything that you've been feeding your overweight horse Strip it all out. We're just going to replace this with hay. Good exercise. Friends forage freedom. And in six months time, we're going to reassess. And during that six months, things happen. The horse starts to lose its excess weight. Hang on a moment. Alexa, stop. It's telling me to redo my fire. <laughs> Where was I? You are, um, where was I? Was, 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 was so, so you strip the diet out, you strip the diet out so that after six months, you can go, Well, my horse has actually lost loads of weight, he's calmer, he's happier, he's fitter, and his feet are looking tons better. Yet, 
Prior to this, you were feeding a ton of things and you were feeding the good things. You'd already worked out that you didn't want these high density feeds. So you were feeding better, more organic feeds and always sticking in a gut balancer and a supplement and yet your horse was still overweight. So let's just have a quick look at what obesity in horses really means. So this is a quote. Uh, this is a quote that I got from a paper that was all about looking at human obesity versus equine obesity. And can we can we draw any parallels from that? So it says masses of domesticated horses are physically inactive and provided rations that are grossly excessive with regards to their nutritional energy requirements. Horse owners purchase energy dense rations at the behest of attractive advertising and free advice offered by the powerful and influential equine food manufacturing industry. It's a welfare problem because now what we have actually in the world are lots of overweight horses. And yet these companies that provide this feed and these supplements that you can go and buy online or you can go and buy down the agricultural store are not asking you what are your horse's individual requirements. They're not asking you that at all. Why? Because it's irrelevant to them. They're not screening every single person who goes and buys a supplement. So I should tell you one of two things. One, it can't have enough in there to be toxic. So it's generally recognized as safe. So therefore, is it going to have enough in there to make any difference? Because we've actually now got an overweight horse. Now let's have a look at what overweight horses happens to overweight horses. So this is what I call fear and hope marketing. And I have had to put up with this and help so many horses over the years that have actually been overweight. Now, a lot of people will tell you that horses cannot live on hay alone, that they need supplementing. Well, I tell you what, the first thing to do is to, to strip it out for six months at least. And then maybe the people that are telling you this, why don't you go and ask them if you can see some pictures of their horses and say, you know, you're telling me that horses can't live on a hay only diet but I've seen some pictures of your horses online and they're overweight. These horses are suffering from obesity. So how do you know that the problems that you say the supplements are curing are not actually caused by the fact that you've been overfeeding your horse and that your horse hasn't got enough, had enough exercise? So what does obesity lead to? Well, there's a huge number of issues. Exercise intolerance, they, they don't wanna exercise thermoregulatory problems, they can't regulate their temperature so easily. And so what happens? Horses get clipped and then rugged, and then humans try and thermoregulate for them. Abnormal reproductive performance, not many people are that bothered with that, but people who are breeding really should, you know, take notice of that because being overweight causes problems. Benign lipomas in the gut causing tract obstructions. So these lipomas can float around in the gut or they can be pedunculate in nature and they can cause colic. Fat, effectively. Worsening IR, so that's insulin resistant and that's been implicated in the pathogenesis of all of these. Laminitis, PPID. Oh yeah, PPID. So they now are looking at PPID being brought on because of insulin resistance, because it's associated with excessive circulating plasma cortisol. So we know that as ACTH, right? Adrenocorticotrophic hormone, commonly associated with laminitis. Chronic IR is being overfed, increasing oxidative, uh, chronic IR, when you're being overfed, increases oxidative stress to those critical dopaminerg dopaminergic nerves. I nearly couldn't say that right then. What does that mean? That means that, the, that they are controlling the secretion of these hormones. And when they are affected, the secretion of the hormones goes haywire. That's all down to potentially obesity. Osteochondrosis, osteochondrosis which is different to osteonecrosis and usually just about and usually 
is caused in the growing individually individuals. It is degenerative and it's a necrotic condition. Hyperlipemia, that's elevated levels of lipids like cholesterol and triglycerides. And these circulatory, they disturb the organs, their circulatory disturbances, and they can cause organ failure, liver and kidneys specifically because of fatty infiltration into these organs. Endotoxemia, systemic inflammation when microbes proliferate in the tissues. EMS, equine metabolic syndrome, horses that are at risk of laminitis resulting from IR. Hypertension, yes, horses can get high blood pressure. And hoof problems, thrush, seedy toe, white line disease, hoof cracks, abscesses, to name a few. These are all related to a horse being overweight. And yet these horses that are overweight are told that if they feed a supplement, that's going to fix it. Let's go have a look at some of these horses. Okay, let's just refresh this and let's hope that these come back. These images, oh, there you go. So let's just look at these. What are you looking for when you're looking for an animal that is overweight? Now, this we'd pretty much all agree that this animal does look overweight. We've got a cresty neck. This is one fat pad that you find just around the shoulders. Then you've got one here just up towards uh, the, uh, at the top of the flanks, towards the base of the back. And then you have one here, which is just on the croup. Now, these are specific fat pad areas, but you can look at that horse and you can see that it's overweight. Now, that horse is now susceptible to all of these things right? It's quite possible. Look at this horse. This is, most of us would agree, overweight, big appley bottom, looks generally large, it's got those fat pads. Um, and yeah, that's that's a fairly large looking horse. So let's move on. And, and here's a large looking Shetland. So we're all in agreement that these are overweight animals. But then, and here's another one with a big cresty neck, but then let's move on again. And, and we're kind of like, well, is this horse overweight? Well, yeah, it is. So this horse is very overweight. Let's move on. Anybody got a horse that looks like that? Now let's move on. Look at this horse. He's overweight too. Look at his appley bum. Look at his neck. He's overweight. This horse is overweight. Let's move on. And another one that is overweight. Look at the fat pads here. And another one, beautiful picture of an animal that is actually overweight. Look at his neck. Moving on, this horse too, overweight. Look at this area here. Look towards the back end. Again, another one. And another. And another. Now, this isn't, doesn't look quite the classic overweight. Look at the neck. Doesn't look particularly fat the neck and yet when we look at the rest of the body we can see that this horse isn't the slim athletic horse that it needs to be and again another one look at, look at the rump and another shall i keep going on and here's a frisian that's overweight look at his appley bum these are horses that are overweight and another one and another one. They are and another one. Now the showing world, let's just stop sharing that a moment. Now the showing world are pretty, uh, you know, add to this because they, they think that horses that are overweight, you know, look pretty good. Skinny horses, they think, are skinny because they're showing a few ribs here and there. That's not good. But obesity is a problem. And why are horses overweight? Because they are being fed too much, fed far, far too much. And certain vitamins that are like vitamin E, where you say, I'm feeding my horse vitamin E because they're not going to get that from a hay diet. And yet you've got an animal who is suffering from far more than problems than a vitamin E deficiency because it's overweight. Now, if every single person watching this or every single person out there that comments on all of those posts that say that hay-only diets are no good for horses, please look at your own horse. Please look at your own horse that you are feeding a supplement to. 
could you put your hand on your heart and say that your horse is a perfect weight or could be slightly overweight? Now, there are loads of people out there, of course, with horses that are a perfect weight. But who's judging that? You or would I judge your horse as being a perfect weight? There are horses that are fit and go out and and do very, very well. When I was recently in Morocco, uh, and I think I've told you this story before, there were horses there that didn't actually have the best hoof care, I'd have to say, but they were all sound. They didn't have their toes chopped off and they had, if, if anything, they had too much foot. And these horses were pulling big carts all day long for, for tourists. And these horses were some of the fittest horses I'd ever seen that I'd ever come across. I, I don't think I've, and they weren't skinny. They were just really fit not an ounce of fat on them. Now, these horses, they weren't fed these fancy supplements because the owners couldn't afford that. They weren't fed these fancy bag feeds. And yet these horses were on a work regime where they were working quite a lot of hours a day. And so when you're told that you can't build top line on a horse that's already compromised, you're not going to find that answer in a bag feed or a supplement. So what should you do? What should you do to see first before you go and spend all your money on something that is at best not going to do anything and at worst going to add to certain problems with your gut microbes? What should you do? You should strip out everything. Feed a hay only diet, not a monoculture not just Timothy, you need to feed, or just orchard grass, you need to feed a mixture. Work harder at going and finding the right hay. You can't just throw a supplement at a at a at a hay forage that isn't that isn't good enough for your horse, that isn't diverse enough, and hope that that supplement will fill in the gaps, because that's not going to happen, because that supplement that's filling in the gaps for you is also filling in the gaps for the horse that's out on grass up the road, and the horse that's kept in a stable eating a load of tons of bag feed. It's the same supplement sold to everybody, and they don't care who buys it. They don't care whether your horse is compromised and overweight and fat and obese and, and struggling and has poorly feet. Nobody's caring about that. The only people that care are people like me who turn up and say to you, we got to sort this out and I'm going to help you and I'm going to stop this paranoia and your neurosis with this feeding because you've been told you've got to keep feeding. We're going to strip it out. And after six months, if this horse is going to be deficient, we are going to know it. We're going to know it well before then. But first of all, we've got to get off quite a few kilos of weight because it's overweight. And then let's start seeing everything change. So these horses in Morocco, they weren't fed the fancy bag feeds or the fancy supplements that would have cost the owners a fortune. Do you think they would have spent that money on those horses? No. And do you think they had grass to go home and eat? No. So what do you think they ate? They were eating straight. They had probably were given oats. They were probably given some kind of straight and they had hay. But I can't tell you, I can't tell you if I ever saw in Morocco, I can tell you rather, if the, the, in Morocco, an overweight horse, not one overweight horse. Yet in the Western, more Western world, the UK, Europe, the States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, we're seeing horses that are incredibly overweight. We are. Your biggest problem is not which supplement is going to be a treatment, cure or medicine. It's, it's what can you do to your horse's management and diet to actually get your horse fit and stop all the likely problems that are going to occur with your horse being overweight. So the next time somebody tells you that a hay-only diet is not going to be sufficient for your horse, please ask them. Say, can I see a picture of your horses? Can I see a picture of your horse, which is 
is is going to be the perfect horse, not overweight in any way whatsoever, because it goes hand in hand. If we feed supplements, we are likely to be feeding bag feeds too, even if it's just a chaff. But on the, we add to that chaff some linseed and we add to that chaff some garlic and then we add to the chaff the gut balancer. But that gut balancer is not enough. So it's best the supplement companies tell you to feed that gut balancer with something else and a few other of their products, which all cost eye-wateringly, eye-watering amounts of money. Ask them. Say, can I have a look at your horses, please? Can you take photographs and show me? Or even just go and look on their Facebook page and go and have a look to see if their horses are overweight. Strip it back first. Once you've done that, and once you've found out whether your horse needs it or doesn't, and you won't know until you strip it out, then and only then should you go and have a blood test to tell you whether your horse is deficient in something or whether the problems that you see your horse exhibiting are actually down to the fact that your horse is overweight. So please, please, guys, you've just don't be sucked in to the fear and hope marketing. Don't. Because when you do my job and you go out and see such a lot of sickness out there and horses that can't walk on their own four feet because they're sore, because they've got problems. Do the right thing first and strip the diet out first. And then, and only then, after six months, don't just knee jerk and think every horse needs it. Because well, that's every single horse that needs it on the planet. No. I'll see you in about 40 minutes on our big live that we do in the Phoenix group. Gary and I will be going live tonight at eight o'clock UK time which is nine o'clock in Europe, mid-afternoon in America, and morning in New Zealand and Australia. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Vivian. Jody says, we have gotten used to seeing overweight horses. It's become the norm. Absolutely. Rebecca Moody says, morning, does the mineral block supply all the electrolytes they need? A mineral block, you're told that a horse can't lick a mineral block. They can't, the tongues are too thick. They can't get it in them. So so just use my supplement that I feed to absolutely every other horse on the planet, this particular supplement, and this is going to fix all your problems. It's going to give you all the electrolytes you need. So if your horse is fit, really, really fit, and you're going out, it's not overweight, it's lean, it's fit, and you're going out and you've been building up everything you've been building up this horse's fitness and you're going out and you're doing a lot of work with your horse how many hours a day are you doing that that you're taking your horse away from their feed supply and if they aren't getting enough energy from that and by the way there have been studies on horses which were just fed hay and then were fed other feeds and the ones that were fed hay didn't have a problem but people think there's going to be a problem so first and foremost is strip it out and then find out. Salt and mineral blocks, are they the answer to everything? Probably not. But is a supplement that is effectively in a bag that's fed to ent the entire world that anybody can go and buy? Even people with the sickest and most overweight horses can go and buy and nobody really cares, as well as the chaff and the linseed that they're told to put in there with the salt. We need to strip it out first, and then we need to find out. Vivian gives me a thumbs up. Jojo says, hi. Jojo says, my horse keeps getting bad feet for every year, now getting infection. It's a nightmare. So, Jojo, get into the Phoenix group. Put up some pictures and tell us what you're feeding your horse and how you're keeping your horse, and the answer will be in that. I've been on for 35 minutes. I need to shut up because in very, very soon I'm going live on the main page. Phoenix page. Hi, we had no bag feeds and certainly no vitamin and mineral stuff in the late 70s. No, we didn't. And all seemed fit and not fat. Never heard of Lammy till coming back to horses in the 90s. We have an obesity epidemic. And the neurosis of you have to feed supplements and feeds and bag feeds and chaff and linseed and all of that are adding to it. We didn't need all that. Did, were they all dead then? No. We've got a pathology obesity epidemic. 
It's called The Phoenix Way Path to Hoof Health. And I think I will make sure that the link is in the, in the description to this live. All right. We'll see you there. We'll help you, Jojo. You just got to get in the group and it's totally free. We'll see you. We'll see you at eight o'clock UK time. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>